so the overall reaction path uh, for D2 generation, uh, the relative rates of that generation then will determine the activity of the deuterium uh, uh, in, in the lattice. In, in these experiments, uh, in, in any voltage less than about uh, 50 millivolts positive to the reversible hydrogen potential, uh, we will uh, have that the uh, lattice is in the beta palladium hydride form or be uh, beta palladium deuteride in our case. The deuterium is in the lattice uh, as uh, deuterons D plus and the diffusion coefficient, at least in the alpha phase, has been taken uh, to be 10 to the minus 7 square centimeters per second. Uh, that's the given value at 300 K uh, in the alpha phase. So upon adsorption, upon adsorption then, uh, it is well known that the atoms then uh, diffuse into the metal lattice, but not as atoms, but at deuterons. So if we, do, we can draw a potential energy surface here for the dissociation of water into uh, adsorbed palladium atoms, we see then that these uh, atoms on the surface then diffuse into the metal lattice uh, uh, and will do so at the diffusion coefficient then I just mentioned. Um, if we then, an electrochemist then would consider uh, or would view, would view the situation uh, that the potential energy surface now in this strong potential field of 10 to the 11th uh, volts per meter uh, near the surface or approximately that near the surface, uh, we have a shifting of the uh, uh, potential energy surface down uh, and the, it's lower, it, 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 it's by an amount that is the difference between the solution potential and the inner potential or the galvani potential uh, in the metal. So now the diffusion, now the uh, deadsorbed diffuses into the lattice into a very shallow potential well. I'll mention more about that in just a moment. And the electron enters the band structure of the metal. Uh, and we know that because uh, in migration experiments, if you now put a potential field across this electrode in solution, you can draw the deuterons to one side of the electrode or other. This, uh, this is quite a well-known well phenomenon. So it is in the lattice uh, uh, as D+. Plus. In other words, we have a low-temperature plasma uh, at this point. If we look at the thermodynamics, which I wish I had not done that yet. Here we go. If we look at the... Uh, if we look at the uh, thermodynamics of this situation, uh, it's also well known that the electrochemical potential must be the same across the, uh, across the interface, uh, and therefore the, chemical, the sum of the chemical potential in the Faraday times the solution potential uh, must equal the uh, chemical potential in the lattice times the Faraday times the, uh, the uh, inner or galvanic potential in the metal. And so we can measure this quantity by a number of electrochemical means, uh, and the minimum value which you uh, measure is on the order of 800 millivolts. So we say, wonderful, so what? Uh, that's not a big deal. But the big deal is, is that if you were to try to change the chemical potential of deuterium gas uh, from this process by compression, by hydrostatic compression of deuterium, uh, then you would indeed have to develop 10 to the 27th atmosphere. So this is the astronomical pressures or compressions that we uh, thought that we were, uh, would have available to us uh, for consideration of, of, uh, of, of a reaction. The point is, is although these pressures are not attained, the cohesive strength of, of uh, the palladium lattice, I think, is only about 4,000 atmos atmospheres. The process of dis uh, dissolution of deuterium into that lattice is a very high energy process. Uh, we also point out that, that deuterium gas is never seen in the lattice. Uh, there is very little, which indicates that there's very little S electron character surrounding the deuterons. Uh, and indeed, the electrons, uh, the, de the deuterons are uh, uh, shielded then by the electrons in the lattice, uh, and it, it is indeed D plus uh, in the lattice, as I mentioned. Further, the observation of these very high constant separation factors, if you measure the separation factor for hydrogen and deuterium in the metal lattice, you find that they go to extremely high values uh, of about 9.5. If you measured in solution, just from the, just from the uh, electrolysis of hydrogen and deuterium in the solution at all mixtures, you come up with a value that's easily predicted by statistical mechanical theory. Uh, and that's what, one over two, uh, this, uh, one divided by two raised to the three halves power, and that's exactly what you observe. So the only theory that explains the very high uh, pressures that you, are the very high separation and constant separation factors that you see in the lattice as a function of uh, applied electrode potential uh, indicates or, or it can only be explained if the hydrogen and deuterium in the lattice, the hydrogen in the lattice is considered to be a classical oscillator. In other words, a zero, zero point energy, uh, not as a quantum oscillator. So in this situation, we have uh, 
the possibility, or we have high compression, we have extreme, uh, extremely high mobility, these things are very free to move in the lattice, we have, therefore have many collisions uh, and very long confinement times. So we therefore consider the possibility under these high energy conditions, uh, reactions of this other form, uh, reactions of this form. That, I don't know how that got in there. Let me. I've missed a slide somewhere. That was it. So we considered reactions uh, of this form then in the lattice. Uh, and our own evidence for these reactions uh, occurring are that we have measured a neutron, a neutron flux under uh, certain circumstances. We have measured uh, the mass spectroscopy of the products, which uh, initially were quite ambiguous, but more recently we've uh, obtained some uh, interesting results, which I'll mention in a few minutes. Uh, we were really looking for uh, helium-3, which is extremely difficult with the uh, equipment that we had or have to work with. Uh, we've measured the gamma ray spectrum associated with a thermal neutron uh, uh, gamma reaction with the water in the water bath, tritium measurements, uh, and calori uh, calorimetric uh, measurements. So I'd just like to take a minute or two to discuss each one of those, uh, those results. I'm sorry that one slide was out of order. The uh, one way to measure tritium, of course, would be to use a sealed cell. This might be a, a nickel cell, uh, and to catalytically reconvert the deuterium and oxygen uh, by some catalytic converter uh, in, in the top. Uh, Dr. Gottesfeld here has given me some very good hints on how to do that, uh, and look for the, uh, the uh, tritium, the T, uh, TDO or T2O accumulation in the liquid state. We did not do that. We uh, just uh, let the uh, the uh, system run and counted on the fact that uh, some of the tritium atoms in the lattice, which would be exchanging with deuterium on the surface if formed, then would uh, indeed give rise to uh, exchange with the water and an accumulation uh, of, of tritium in the, uh, in the water. So this is a scintillation spectrum of the, uh, or the beta ray spectrum of the solution, which grows in time as predicted uh, by solving a differential equation, which takes into consideration the uh, accumulation as a function of the initial, uh, the initial tritium concentration, the sampling frequency, you'll be withdrawing samples, uh, and so you have to take that frequency of sampling uh, into consideration, the uh, total number of atoms of uh, deuterium in the cell to begin with, the DT separation factor, the rate of the nuclear reaction, and of course, the rate of electrolysis. Uh, and you can you get a curve then, and from that curve you can uh, uh, determine the uh, rate, uh, predict the rate of accumulation, which fits very nicely to the uh, to the uh, observed result. Further, we use a, a sodium iodide, a sodium iodide uh, detector uh, to look at the gamma ray spectrum at approximately the Fermi distance from the uh, cell uh, in, uh, as the uh, neutrons pass through water. Uh, and we have de uh, indeed obtained a spectrum which has a peak near uh, 2200 uh, keV, which we attribute to the uh, in gamma reaction of thermal neutrons with water. Uh, in, in the solution. And further, with a uh, Bonner sphere of not very high, sen of not very high uh, um, sensitivity, we uh, detected on, on, in these particular experiments a, a neutron, a direct neutron flux of, of uh, thermalized neutrons. Uh, the calorimetric data, uh, I'll give you some results and then show you exactly how these were obtained, uh, were made uh, on a variety of electrodes. Uh, these excess heats, I will show you how these were calculated in just a moment, but these are excess heats that we measure and we express them in as specific uh, excess heats, watts per cubic centimeter, uh, as a function of current density, 864 and 512 for these various size rods. We went to rods uh, because we wanted to show that the, uh, that the uh, uh, reaction or that the heat that we were observing was a function of the volume of the electrode and not a function of the surface area, which I think it uh, uh, clearly shows. Uh, 